Hello, I'm Antonio D'Amico, this is Pointy Hat, and welcome to D&D with a Twist. Yes, dear, it's time for your bi-weekly D&D flattening appointment. This is a show where I take a D&D thing, could be a class, it's a class, race, monster, spell, magic item, whatever, honestly, and I give it a twist at the end that you can run off with and put in your very own games. Apparently, there are people out there that don't stay for the end of the video, so they don't know that there's like an actual content thing that you can use at the end of these. So yeah, it's what the whole show is about. Please stay. <laughs> it's like those TLC style makeover shows where people would go and like get a whole new set of teeth and some trendy hair and then turn the corner to show their new me and then the families would cry. Except here, the only ones crying are the people in my comments who want me to do whatever I'm not doing in any given video. So when I think of barbarians, I think of... Barbarian is the class for gym bros and people with anger issues. Barbarians are the roid fuel mad gains experts of the D&D world. Their place in the battlefield is very, very clear. They are the quintessential tank class, getting the biggest hit dice, the biggest weapons, and the biggest muscles. And speaking of biggest hit dice, your boy got a sponsorship! Yes, I am a true YouTuber now. A hat has to live off of something, so... This video was sponsored by Dice Goblin! Dice Goblin is a dice retailer founded by two humble goblin dice merchants. And guess what? Their very first dice-related Kickstarter campaign is live now! This campaign is referred to as their Session Zero because it's all about character creation. Each dice set that you can get by pledging for their campaign is themed around a D&D archetype, inspired by the official D&D classes, just like going through character creation during your Session Zero. And I, I think that's cute. The Kickstarter launch with four sets of eight RPG dice, and further sets are locked behind stretch goals. I think my favorite one is the Mystic set, which is themed around wizards, and not around that class that wizards keep threatening to one day release. I'm just a sucker for blue and gold. But you can get more than just dice if you pledge. Add-ons you can snatch with your order include a metal coin, pins, and t-shirts. So if you want to see what the dice goblins have been cooking up for this, head on to the description of this very video, and you will find a link over there. Okay, that's it. I love money. Thank you. So yes, barbarians are tanks, but the way a barbarian tanks is very different from how a paladin or a fighter or a certain cleric or druid subclass can tank. If wizards and rogues are glass cannons, barbarians are your traditional damage sponge. A barbarian's AC is not particularly high, they are not even supposed to wear heavy armor, so they will get hit. But if barbarian's ACs are low, how could they possibly be a good tank? The barbarian's response to this conundrum is sophisticated. If you get hit a lot, just get a lot of hit points. Duh. Duh. They are designed to have the highest hit point pool out of every class, and also get a ton of abilities to reduce incoming damage so that they can last as much as possible on the battlefield. A barbarian's job is to get slapped as much as possible while all the other squishy babies in the party parkour around saying magic funny words and throwing daggers or whatever. And speaking of abilities, let's get the big one out of the way. Rage. Would you like to Rage is the signature ability of the Barbarian. As a bonus action, you enter a state of primal ferocity, where your mind, your body, and your very soul are completely consumed by fiery anger and uncontrollable fury. It's... it's very scary. What the fuck is up, Kyle? No, what did you say, dude? What the fuck, dude? Step the fuck up, Kyle! Rage is designed as a set it and forget it sort of ability. By which I mean, do not forget to set it before you forget it. In any given combat, a barbarian would want to keep the uptime of their rage for as long as possible, which is pretty easy to do as it only ends if one minute passes or you don't attack a creature or take damage for one turn. It also ends if you die, so pro tip, try not to die? Rage, fittingly for an ability themed around going berserk, locks you into constantly either taking damage or dealing damage and nothing else. So why would you want to keep it up? Well, for the bonuses. While raging, you gain advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, making you really, really good at grappling. You also gain a pretty chunky flat bonus to all your damage rolls for every melee strength attack done while you rage, which will keep your damage ceiling up throughout the fight so you're not just standing there like a literal meat shield. But the best bonus to rage is that it gives you resistance to bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage. These are flat out the best damage resistances in the game, and as we have established, if you're playing a barbarian, you're gonna get hit a lot. So you want these up for as long as possible so that your cleric doesn't spend the entirety of their turn babysitting your health bar. Similarly, 
play to a druid's wild shape, you don't get many uses of rage before bedtime, so use them wisely. This is what the anger management courses we've discussed talked about. Long breaths, breathe in through your nose, and out of your mouth, in through the nose. <coughs> So we have taken a look at the signature ability, but what if your barbarian can't ride and therefore can't side? Well, not to worry, let's take a look at the other abilities that come pre-packaged when you choose the barbarian's roid rage lifestyle. And there's a whole bunch of these, so lightning round. Lightning round. Unarmored defense. This is the barbarian telling you that they work too hard on their muscles for you to hide them. Canonically exhibitionist, barbarians actually get better AC when they are naked. You get to add your constitution to your AC as long as you're not wearing armor, so go fight some nudists. Danger sense. Spidey sense, but better. You get advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects, which basically means everything including spells and traps, so you can tell the fireball happy enemy wizard to fucking suck it. Reckless attack or as I like to call it, go crazy, go stupid. This allows you to make any strength-based melee attacks on your turn with advantage, but also gives advantage to any enemy when attacking you. So use it, but don't overuse it. Primal Knowledge, a very anemic attempt to up the Barbarian's god-awful utility. It gives you an extra skill, just because. It's nice to have, I guess. Extra Attack, it's, it's what it says on the tin. You get it. Fast Movement and Feral Instinct. Both of these are designed to let you position yourself as soon as possible on the front lines so you can take the best spot to get hit a lot. Fast Movement gives you an extra 5 feet of movement and Feral Instinct gives you advantage on initiative and allows you to basically ignore being surprised by enemies so long as you rage on that very turn. Instinctive Pounce complements these last two by allowing you to move up to half your speed when you enter rage for even better positioning. Brutal Critical keeps you up to speed with other damage dealers by giving you a whole extra damage die when you crit on a weapon attack. This is pretty good, but it becomes extremely good when it goes from one extra die to two, and then three as you go up in levels. Pray for those 20s. Relentless Rage basically gives you a better version of the half-orc feature Relentless Endurance. If you drop to zero hit points when raging, no you didn't, you drop to one instead, provided you can beat a DC 10 constitution save, and you should be able to beat that. It's better than Relentless Endurance because you can keep using this with a DC going up by 5 every time you use this feature until it's very bedtime. Persistent Rage allows you to give your one brain cell a rest, waving away every requisite for keeping up Rage and making it so your Rage only ends if you die. Remember kids, the key to winning is to not die. Indomitable Might. Shiny math rock is stupid and dumb. No rolling necessary for any strength check. If you roll anything lower than your strength score, not your ability modifier, on a strength check, no you didn't. And you get this ability at level 18, so you better have a 20 on strength by the time you get here. Which means never rolling lower than a 20. Neat. And finally, your capstone ability. Primal Champion. Your strength and constitution just increase by 4? Allowing you to go past 20? So you can just have a 24 in both con and strength. Wait, that's illegal. Simple and efficient, gotta love barbarians. And those are all barbarian core abilities. We have now witnessed the true power of a barb in action. Do you want to see a barb in action? Yes. Yes, that's the thing, sir. I get completely good with this one. But what would a class be without its subclasses? Barbarian subclasses are called paths. Not to be confused by the monk's ways, let's take a look at some, keyword some here, of the barbarian subclasses and see how they change up the barbarian baseline. First up, it's everyone's favorite, Path of the Totem Warrior. If you wanted to be a veterinarian when you were a kid and you are picky, this is a subclass for you. Totem Warrior barbarians embody different animals and depending on the animals they pick, their playstyle also switches. The subclass starts out strong by giving you animal themed spells that you can cast, gaining a third spell at level 10. The flavor here is extra good as it only allows you to cast these as rituals, which really works with the whole vibe of the class as this sort of spiritual warrior that learns by observing nature. It also mitigates one of the barbarian's biggest weaknesses, its dreadful utility. So pretty good. But the meat and potatoes of the subclass is the animal themed abilities you pick at level 3, 6, and 14. You get to pick between 5 animals, bear, eagle, elk, tiger, and wolf. Now, all of these are really good, they are all equally matched, you really can't go wrong, just pick which one- PICK BEAR! PICK Bear at level 3. Bear is the best one. Pick bear. But seriously, unless you somehow ended up as the off tank of the party, picking bear at level 3 gives you resistance to all damage types except psychic when you rage. This is such an insane perk that I can see very few situations where you wouldn't want to pick this. There's more of a case to be made for other animals at level 6 and 14, although the level 14 bear ability is also insanely good for tanking. Each of the animals concentrates on a different thing. 
mostly. Bear abilities are centered around tanking and strength. Eagle abilities are centered on speed and nimbleness, which complements your augmented movement nicely. Elk is centered on nimbleness, giving you more movement. Tiger is also based on speed and nimbleness, and Wolf is based on camaraderie and helping your teammates, which is cute and nice and I like it. It's honestly a very customizable subclass that basically works as your own build a barb workshop, and those are some of my favorite subclasses in D&D, so this one is super solid. Probably one of my favorites for the barb. Another cool barbarian subclass is the Path of Wild Magic. The Path of Wild Magic seeks to go against all rules of nature by making barbarians cast spells, and it works really well. For context, the wording of the rage ability explicitly states that you cannot cast or concentrate on spells when raging. And ever since then, all 5e designers, professional or not, have sought to accomplish what many thought was impossible. They wanted to create the feared, the feared Wizbar. The Path of Wild Magic is a really good adaption of this, and it completely ignores the, in my opinion bad, idea of actually casting spells while raging, and instead opts for a wild magic table like the one of the sorcerer. Now, if you're like me, hearing wild magic table just made you sweat because you're a control freak and you hate randomness and not being able to know exactly what will happen when you use an ability. But I actually happen to think that the wild magic barb has the best wild magic table in the game. Yes, the effects are randomly triggered by rolling a d8 on a table when you enter rage, but contrary to the wild magic search table for sorcerers, all effects on this table are useful in combat to the barbarian. And when I say useful, I mean extremely good. They range from ongoing damage against creatures you choose, teleporting 30 feet every turn to a location of your choosing, putting down a bomb every turn, a plus one to AC to you and your allies, it's really, really solid. All these wild magic abilities make you switch your tactics mid-combat, but they are never a debuff just a switch of playstyle. It's fun. Aside from that, you get a baby bit of utility in the form of a slightly weaker detect magic spell with magic awareness, and plenty of abilities designed to help you control your wild magic surges, like rolling twice and picking the one you prefer, or being able to re-roll whatever you take damage. You also get bolstering magic, which basically allows you to add an extra to your attack rolls, or to give a spell slot to another party member, which will make you the most popular jog among all nerds. Also, the level of the spell slot depends on you rolling a d3, which is very strange, but as a proud owner of a D3, this is just a great excuse to flex on everyone. I do own a D3. Wanna see? Yay. All in all, the Path of Wild Magic is up there with the Echo Knight Fighter for one of my favorite subclasses for melee classes, as someone that pretty much exclusively plays casters. It's fun, it requires you to think on your feet, and it gives you plenty of opportunities to flip the expectations of what a barb is when playing one. Of course, there are many others. The Path of the Ancestral Guardians. No! Your great-granddaughter had to be a cross-dresser! The Path of the Berserker. And the Christian Fundy one. I give it up to God, I'm a God warrior, and I don't want someone with tainted anything in beliefs doing anything with my family! Is she is dark sided too! So we've looked at a barbarian's role in the battlefield, their abilities, their subclasses, and this is all well and good, but what if we gave barbarians a new twist? So you wanna play a barbarian? I love that sound. Barbarians are roid fueled machines that keep themselves alive on the battlefield by simply refusing to die. So before we get into the actual twist part of this, let's do some overview on where barbarians stand in the game. Okay, let me see. Um, yep. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, they're good. Barbarian is a solid class. As a matter of fact, it might be the best class to introduce anyone to D&D combat. Their abilities are easy to understand and to play, and they don't require a lot of memorization or to keep a lot of things in mind to get the best use out of them. Unfortunately, this is also the reason they could get boring for more experienced players, as they end up being quite simplistic compared to other classes. Also, notice how I said they were the best class to introduce anyone to D&D combat. But if your games look anything like mine, combat Combat is just one of the many, many different parts of D&D. A big ding on barbs is their absolutely abysmal utility. The class needs you to boost your strength and constitution primarily, which means that barbarians will be good at literally one skill, and one skill that is not used outside of combat much, athletics. 
All but one of their class abilities are combat centric. That's it. That's all that barbarians get in terms of utility or roleplay as the baseline class is concerned. And it's not like many or any of the subclasses are particularly focused on utility. Now, there are subclasses like the Path of Wild Magic that switch up the traditional barbarian combat playstyle and force you to think on your feet and are great for more experienced players. And I think it's honestly a good thing to have a class that makes the most complicated aspect of D&D, its combat, easy to pick up for people that are learning. But if you play a barb and you feel like you're kind of useless outside of combat? I mean, I can see why. But there is another reason I've heard from people for not playing Barbarian, and it has nothing to do with their lack of utility or them being on the simpler side of things. A lot of people don't play Barbarians because they find them boring or uninspiring when it comes to creating a character's personality and backstory. In the boring and stale world of D&D memes, Barbarian's one and only joke is that they are dumb and stupid and dumb. But guess what? There's literally nothing in the Barbarian class telling you that in order to play a barbarian, you gotta play an idiot caveman that hits stuff real good with a stick. Barbs stay in school. Barbs can be intelligent and compelling characters too. So for this first part, let's make a compelling barbarian character that is not an absolute idiot. Alastair was born the newest member of one of the most famous families of sorcerers in the country. They were known for producing incredibly powerful magic users, able to cast impossibly powerful spells innately. Just like his siblings, Alastair was loved and pampered from birth. That is, until it became clear that Alastair was not like his siblings at all, or like any other member of his family. He showed absolutely no magical aptitude at all, and could not cast a single spell. Even the cantrips that his siblings mastered before learning to read were beyond his reach. As soon as it became clear that Alastair was not gonna continue the family's proud sorcerer's tradition, everything changed. His parents went from expecting the world from him to expecting nothing. And as to Alastair's siblings, their feelings toward their brother went from pity to outright contempt. To Alastair, it felt like no matter how hard he tried to prove his family otherwise, everyone thought he was unable to do anything of worth. Everyone, that is, but the family's stable master. She handed the young boy a training sword and put him to work, and Alistair took her up on the offer instantly. Always positive and eager to prove himself, he went through grueling physical training every single day, pushing his body to its limits, all with a smile on his face. He was eager to prove to his family that he could be good at something, and so he became an incredibly skilled swordsman by the age of 20, able to defeat incredible opponents twice his age and size. The stable master taught him the value of dedication and the importance of perseverance, and he applied the same drive to his academic studies, music, protocol classes, anything to impress his family. But they were never impressed. Nothing could make up for the fact that he wasn't able to use magic. Alastair kept trying and kept his impossibly positive and bright disposition, but his anger and impotence in the face of his family's perpetual disappointment grew and grew inside of him. He kept this anger bottled up inside, and kept training with the stable master with a big smile on his face. Until one day, during a mock battle against his trainer, one of his siblings used a simple spell to trip him and embarrass him. As his sibling laughed, Alastair felt the bottled up anger he kept inside of him spill, and it came out as a blind, powerful rage. And with this rage, something else enveloped him. Magic. Turns out, some of the magical abilities running in Alastair's family's bloodline were inside of him all along. They were just extremely hard to access and extremely hard to control. He was only able to harness this magic when filled with rage, and he had no say in how his magic would manifest once he was raging. Seeing this, Alastair and the stable master got to work in training him to be able to control his rage and his magic. Years after first unleashing his magic, Alastair decides to leave his stable master as he embarks on his very first quest. He will challenge each of his siblings and his parents to a duel their magic against his. If magic is the only thing they'll see value in, he will prove to them that he is deserving of the respect and love they denied him by defeating them with the powers they decided were not good enough to care for. Give him a high strength, high constitution, decent dex for his sword training, and decent intelligence for all those late nights spent studying. Make him a path of wild magic barbarian, of course, and give him a bright and cheery can-do attitude that goes out of the window as he channels his rage in combat. And there you go! A barbarian with a cool personal quest, plenty of fun NPCs for your DM to use, and he's not a big idiot with a stick! Unheard of! Yes, I do love Rockley. 
How did you guess? But what if we want to use some of the things traditionally associated with barbarians, but give those a twist? What if we wanted a bit more utility in our barbarian? Well, if you haven't noticed, there's plenty of barbarian abilities and subclasses that refer to spirits, but not much in the actual class text to refer to that. So, hear me out, possession. What if we made a subclass where entering rage was not rage at all, but rather a literal spirit entering your body, actual spiritual possession? Your barbarian could select the spirit it would let themselves be possessed by, and depending on which one they choose, they would have different abilities and effects. They could also use those spirits to see into the minds of their enemies and more, using their abilities to contact spirits as their utility. Well. I made it! The Path of Spirits is a new barbarian subclass all about spirit possession. It's written and illustrated by me, and I'm kind of proud of the artwork for this one. I think it looks neat. Do you guys like it? No, 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 don't say it. Don't say the thing. Do not say it. So yeah, you can find the Path of the Spirits Barbarian in the description below for free. Go and make your very own barb, and leave a comment or a like, or maybe even click on the little subscribe thing if you like the video and all. Thank you. And welcome to the end of the video. That was barbs. I honestly have a big soft spot for barbarians, and I really tried to make this video funny and informative and give you some cool ideas and a cool subclass. I really, really dislike the boring, samey, tired D&D jokes, and barbarians really get the short end of the stick because they are awful in my opinion. So I hope I succeeded. As always, go to my Twitter if you want to hear me yell, link to everything in the description, and thank you to Dice Goblin for my very first sponsorship. It makes it feel very real now, it's like actual YouTube things are happening. In all seriousness, making these videos is a ton of work, and I gotta pay Bia for her insanely good editing, so thank you to Dice Goblin for sponsoring me, and thank you to every one of you for watching my stuff and sharing it around, because it wouldn't have happened if you didn't. <laughs> anyway, this video sure is long enough. Remember to never push yourself too hard when you're working out, set realistic goals when training, try to be consistent with your routine, even if you can't complete your full set, you just try to do a little something if you can, but don't beat yourself up if you can't. Also, don't take random internet people's advice when it comes to working out. Don't do that. Okay, I'm off to bed. I'm very tired. I love you all. Bye. Bye. Mwah.